Hi, I'm Nicola Cairncross. Hi, hello. Hey, hi. I'm going to talk to you about success. Yes. Okay, so welcome everyone. It's Nicola here and it's another episode of the weekly V-Zine. And this week is um, a week of great excitement in Stupa because it's the 100th anniversary of the author of Zorba the Greek coming to stay in Stupa. And he came here from Crete and he wanted to work a tin mine up in the hills. And the whole Zorba the Greek story, um, although everyone thinks it's set in Crete, is actually was um, written here and was inspired by Stupa and the surrounding areas. So 100 years on. So there's going to be a big dance off this week on Friday night where everyone is going to join arms on shoulders and try and do the Zorba the Greek dance which will be quite funny all along Stupa seafront uh, along Cologria beach I think they might even be doing it in Cardamelia and Agnick as well Agis Nicolaias don't quote me on that it might just be Stupa but there's going to be um, drones trying to take aerial shots of everyone doing this dance all together it should be really good fun what's the weather doing in Greece it's lovely today it's not so hot it's breezy it's cloudy um, on and off we've got sort of intermittent cloud and blue sky and the temperatures come down just to a nice pleasant 24 degrees I've still got my sister Sarah staying and shortly um, my friend Suzanne from Jorgensen who is an ex-client has become a friend she's um, coming to stay for 10 days as well so uh, that really looking forward to that showing someone else around and taking her to all the local hotspots it's been a great week this week. Uh, Kate Cocker and I are into the third week of the Be Everywhere Online um, challenge. Kate's getting speaking inquiries. She's just had her first high level client sign up um, as a result of seeing the ads on Facebook promoting her um, top radio presenter tips. So these were people who'd previously booked a call with her, come along and had a chat and then disappeared off and never taken any action. So just showing her presenter tips and boosting them on from her Facebook page has raised her profile enough to bring a client back and she just you know was ready to go paid up straight away and started work which was really cool the other thing that's happened is we've just started my fast start masterclass re-recordings um, there's a really uh, great four-week course in my B uh, clicks and leads Academy called the fast start masterclass and it's it's still very good it's still very relevant but it, actually I thought it needed a little bit of updating now because there's not so much emphasis on having your own website nowadays although I would always say as I've said in one of these reasons before it's a really good idea to um, as my mentor calls it own the race course and have everything based on your own website but then you circulate out from there like um, a cartwheel I like to think of it as a cartwheel um, so I do still believe it's important to have your own website but when you're getting started that can be the one thing that holds you back it takes quite a long time to figure out how to build a website through even using WordPress um, and it can also be quite a significant expense if you want someone else to build it for you so what we're doing with this fast start masterclass is bypassing the website part for the time being and getting people off to a flying start with just a Facebook page and I've been showing them how to boost that how to build an audience how to create a look-alike audience so a bigger pool of people to talk to and interact with so that's all been going very well as well and the first call for that is on Saturday so you'll be seeing this VZ next week when we'll be on to week two but as it's a six-week course it's still not too too late to join us so if you just go to um, nicolacairncross.com forward slash masterclass then you'll be able to find out more about that and join us for week two so let's get on with the v-zine shall we Today I want to talk to you about the importance of having a mentor. Now I know it sounds like I'm going to be banging my own drum here and in, indeed I do feel like I've been banging on a little bit about Clicks and Leads Academy for a while now. But I've just come off um, a mentoring call with my clients in Clicks and Leads Academy and two or three of them turn up every week. And as well as getting help within the forum any time, night or day because they can access the forum through the app. Um, they like to, some of them like to turn up on calls because it's just it's sometimes easier just to talk and we use zoom technology so we can all see each other 
while we're talking, which is great because it really makes for a connection. And one of the recurring themes that happens on these calls is, apart from someone um, just saying, you know, what do I do next? I've done this, this and this, what do I do next? Um, one of the other recurring themes is getting, bringing people's expectations back down to earth. Because um, one of my clients particularly, she keeps saying woolly statements like, and I do pick her up on it and tell her she's being woolly, um, it's not working, I've done this, I ran it for a day, it didn't work. And you can only really say if things are working if you've got some sort of sense of what the usual outcome should be and then whether what you're doing is measuring up to the usual outcome because for example if you want one person to take an action it may well be that the 10 people have to take the preceding action and 100 people have to take the preceding action before that and a thousand people have to take the preceding action before that let me give you an example if you get a thousand people to watch a video and there's a call to action at the end of the video to perhaps click here or go there or visit that URL or download this report, then perhaps it will take up to a thousand people seeing the video before a hundred people take the action of say clicking the URL and downloading the report. And then it might be that um, there's a series of follow-up emails and after that the 100 people get a series of follow-up emails but only 10 people take the action which is to book a call to talk to you and then out of those 10 people perhaps only one person becomes a client. Now every business has metrics like this which can be worked backwards from the point of sale but not every business owner knows how to do it and um, in online particularly it's a good idea to find yourself a mentor who knows what the metrics are, who knows what the steps in the marketing funnel and the sales funnel should be and then who can walk you through what's working for your funnel and your marketing um, cycle if you like and what's not working because if a client says to me it's not working and I, I start to question the numbers and they don't know the numbers then I am very clear with them that they don't know what's working and what, is, what isn't working. And we can actually look, I mean today we, it was about the Facebook ads, so we were actually able to look, go and look at the, the campaign level, go and look at the ad group level, go and look at the ad itself, look at the landing page that the people arrived on when, you know, 25 clicks had gone to this landing page and not one had actually opted in which tells me there's something wrong with the landing page. It also tells me we need more than 25 clicks. So, um, you know, we were able to look at that as well and optimize the ad. But it saves so much time if you've got a mentor who knows these things. A mentor, not even, you know, in, in internet marketing necessarily, but someone who's achieved what you're looking to achieve. It saves so much time and it can save you so much money too because it stops you going off and buying course after course where there's absolutely no personal backup um, at the end of the course and you don't know who to ask questions of or who to get the right answers from or even if to trust the answers you know so it's really important I think to whatever you want to do for example my son is interested in getting into property investment and I would say to him the first thing to do is try and find a mentor start going to meetings start thinking about what you could offer of value if you can't afford to pay a mentor what you could offer in value in return for getting mentoring from that person. So it saves you a lot of time and we all know time is money and time is heartbreak and time is, um, you know, unless you start getting results early on, you do get discouraged and give up. So you can, saving time is important to get to the point where you're getting some results so you're encouraged to carry on. And also, if you can afford to invest in a good mentor who's done what you want to do, it's going to save you much, much more than the money you're spending on the mentor in, in not making mistakes, in not buying software you don't need, in not buying training courses you don't need, for example. And all of the most successful people have at least one mentor and sometimes several. I can think of some very successful people I know who've got more than one mentor, often for different things, but sometimes just to have a, a board of people that you can discuss things with and get a consensus of opinion and then you can make the decision about your business based on some really good advice that you've got from all those different mentors. So think about it, if you're struggling, how can you find a mentor? How can you offer value to that mentor in return for their helping you? How could you pay a mentor which would shortcut financial and time um, savings? And you know, how could you just speed up your process by getting the advice of someone who's been where you want to be?
I hope you go and find a great mentor. I've had loads of good ones over the years, great ones in fact, and it's, I know that it's really helped me. So on the blog we've just recorded the 150th episode and it's going out on my birthday as well so that's the 29th September for anyone who's forgotten. Phoebe and Nelson. No, I'm joking. Um, and it's been quite a, an interesting ride with the podcast. I've just recently um, signed up a client who has been listening to the podcast for two years. And um, if we'd given up an episode, say 99 or 100, she wouldn't have done that. So I can actually see through my Infusionsoft that uh, she didn't sign up for anything else she just literally listened to the podcast for two years on the recommendation of a friend and then signed up as a, a high level coaching client so if anyone's in any doubt that podcasts really work then as well as just augmenting your marketing they can work as a client generation machine all on their very own so in that episode which is episode 150 we talk about what to do if people don't pay on time that's not just if you're doing client work but sometimes as an affiliate and i earn some fairly big chunks of money from affiliate marketing it's really quite a blow when someone doesn't pay you on time especially if the affiliate payment is in the thousands so we discuss how to deal with that in a way that doesn't make you feel scarce and doesn't make you have to do anything icky but just reminds the client or the affiliate why they should be looking after some of their best salespeople. Now, if you've got a business and clients regularly don't pay on time, as Judith's used to in her accountancy business, we also discuss what you need to do about that and how to go about that in a way that doesn't make you feel scarce or icky. On the VZ last week, we were talking about confidence. It's all about confidence. It's all about pushing through if you don't have any confidence, how to get more confident and um, all those useful things because it takes an awful lot of confidence to be able to get in front of a camera for example I'm not very confident in front of a camera but it's all in the editing that's where the magic lies thanks very much Phoebe and how you can just take baby steps until you get more confident as you go along can't remember what's on the blog at all what did we cover in the easy last week <laughs>